Hey everybody, several of my viewers have asked how to declutter buildings and add a snow mask and do things like add a few simple objects to a building. And so that's what this video is basically going to teach you to do. I will exit out of my current edit of the map. What we're going to do is, actually let's just exit out of that just to make everything nice and clean. The very first step if you've never edited anything is you're going to need to go to the... I'll just start this, uh, sorry to interrupt myself. All of the links will be in the description of YouTube. So be sure to check there for downloads or for, for the links for all these things. And I'll present this based on you knowing nothing, or at least that will be my best. I think almost everybody in the world has the talent to do very few basic edits to the map. And it's actually quite fun once you start doing it. So anyway, let's continue. I'll stop interrupting myself and we'll go on from here. One last thing, I'm very limited for time and I want to get this video out to people. So this probably will not be as good as some of my other tutorials. It'll probably have scenes of me rambling like I am now, but I'll try to keep those to a minimum and just in case you're wondering why I didn't edit th some things out, it's because I'm pressed for time, but I want you guys to get this video. Anyway, let's get started. So, Giants Developer Network, you need to go in here. To download, you need to sign in. It is a free account. Just create a user profile if you don't have one, and then go in here to the downloads page. You won't see the downloads tab in t unless you have a user account and are signed in, but you are looking for this Giants Editor version 7.10, assuming you are watching this for Farming Simulator 17. And they haven't come out with a new version yet. But if there is a newer version, get the most recent updated version of Giants Editor. Anyway, you will also need a text editor. I use Notepad++. And then for this edit, now if you're just move, moving stuff around on the map, you won't need this. But you will need this page on Seasons. Again, the link will be in the description. So, let's get started. You... Uh, Download and install Giants Editor, and then you want to look at, whoops, I think I already had a folder for that. You want to get a copy of your map. So I just downloaded a fresh copy of the West Coast from Mod Hub just to make sure that, you know, it's, it's fresh from scratch, so it doesn't have any of my personal changes in there. And then obviously you're going to want to extract that map. And for testing... If you notice, I'll show you my mod folder while that is extracting. This is my current mod folder. Look at that. It's not even zipped up. If you are playing a mod single player, you never have to zip it up. So if you're just editing and making changes for yourself and it's your personal edit, you never have to zip it up again. Anyway, let's head back to the... I think it was this one. I can't remember. It opened it up in a new window. Okay, let's just click downloads. There we go. So we can delete that now. The very first step, whenever you edit a map, I probably should not have here. It's good practice to always save a backup copy. And I leave my backup copy zipped so that way I know that I haven't touched them and that date that it was zipped remains right there. So I know when the last time I edited it, I know when I save it. And then if you do multiple changes, you know, name it something different. Anyway, let's continue on. So go to the map. You are looking for something.i3d. It's typically kept in this maps folder here. You want to double click on it. If this isn't the default program yet, you might have to choose open with. And then of course, look Look for Giants Editor and open it up. And then when this opens, while it's loading, I'll highlight a few of the different areas of this. This is the console. You'll basically have information down here. Uh, this is important for checking for errors. The scene graph over here is on the left. And then you may or may not have the attributes train editing window. You can move these around anywhere or get rid of them as you wish. And I think we'll actually exit out of those because we won't be editing terrain for now. But if they are not there, you can add them with the window. User attributes is pretty important, so I typically always keep that one open, as is the console. Anyway, let's get on to editing. So, we want to find our farm. Just, I guess I'll start out with this. Basic movements around the map are going to feel a little bit awkward if you have never used an editor before. If you press and hold the left alt button, and then you press and hold the left mouse button, so this is left alt, left mouse, held down, it rotates the view. There is another option called framed rotate. It basically rotates around an object. So here, I will click on a car. 
if I accidentally have, or if I change it, I forget the hotkey, but if I have framed rotate on, now I hold left alt and left mouse, whoops, it is going to, whoops, you have to press F to focus on something. That's another hotkey, I'll get to that in a second. But it will, so this is again, left alt and left mouse, framed rotate, it rotates around an object. So if you are working on one specific object, that sometimes is a lot easier. So for now, we will uncheck framed rotate and it will go back to rotating around the center axis that you are currently at. Again, that is left alt and left mouse button. And as you just saw, if you left click on anything, you can press F to focus on it. Again, we'll just do that again for visual demonstration. So that is how you focus. And if you press and hold, so to cover the rest of the basic controls, left alt and middle mouse button is this, it's like panning. It kind of helps you scroll. So that's the left alt and middle mouse button. Again, these are all held down at the same time while I am moving the mouse around. And then left alt and right mouse button moves in and out. You can also use the mouse scroll, but it is a lot easier just to use the left mouse but or excuse me, left alt and the right mouse button. So just to recap one more time, left alt, left mouse button, left alt, middle mouse button, Left alt, right mouse button. Those are the basic controls. Okay, let's get started with, you know what? I'll just duplicate the addition that I made. So in case you want to do something similar, uh, first of all, we have to get our bearings. If you're not editing anything with audio files, you can go up here to view, show audio sources. So that will make the map a little bit easier to edit. Let's go over here. The lean to that I grabbed was this one, I believe. So here's the first lesson. If you click on anything in the map, you want to make sure that if you look over here on the scene graph, you are grabbing what you want. Sometimes you click on something and well, here's a perfect example. So if I go to, I'm thinking I'm moving this shed around, right? Well, if you notice, yes, I'm moving this shed around, but this shed also had gutters attached to it. And those gutters are were not being moved when I was moving the shed. So always, 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 every time you click on something and want to move it before you move it or duplicate it. Oh, here's another perfect example, right? The gutter was not clicked. Make sure that you have the very parent object clicked to make sure that you are moving everything attached associated with that object. That is the first lesson. It happens a lot with trees actually, because trees, and this can cause you problems on your map. So this is important. Don't just skip this part. Trees or bushes. Here we go. Maple stage five. It looks like that was made scaled a little bit smaller. I'll cover that in a second. So the maple right here, a lot of objects, especially if it's a good object, have this level of detail here. It's basically a way so that it makes it, you can render it from a far distance and it gives it a very simple, lower resource intensive image. And then you can render it from closer and it will make it more clear. I'm not really sure how it works. I just know that it is important. So sometimes when you click on an object, for example, say I were to click on the tree and, oh, look at this. I think I'm moving the tree around. Well, guess what? This other invisible spot was not moving. And a lot of the time you can run into collisions. You can run into invisible walls and it just... You know, then how do you find where this was originally again? So again, whenever you move something, make sure that you are moving the entire object. And here, for example, if I wanted to move this entire hedge tree four, it looks like that is, yeah. So it looks like Bullet Bill, to make his editing a lot easier, he made an entire hedgerow like this. And he, you know, put them together. And then so here's another important lesson. You can duplicate that and add that somewhere else. But for that, we are going to take one of these lean twos and we're going to duplicate that. So let's click on the lean to and we will to duplicate something. You do left control and D as in Delta that duplicates that object. And then to move that object to somewhere else on the map, like where I moved it, Another really helpful shortcut is left control and B. Now, 
left control B, it's kind of like a pre-command. It doesn't actually do anything by itself, but I have pressed left control and B. And then the next time I left click, that shed moves to wherever the mouse cursor is at. And this is a great way, and I'll, I'll show you why it was floating in the air there. This is actually a perfect way to plant trees throughout the map. So I can control D to duplicate it and then control B. And now that tree rides along the surface of the terrain. And if I want to plant, so if, say I'm planting this entire area with trees, if I, with the left mouse button clicked, again, I'll just do that again. So I press left control and B. It, that's the pre command. I'm not holding it down. It's not like a movement command. But now if I press and hold the left mouse click, this is what happens. Now, something else, if I press shift, it will copy that item at its perfect orientation. And this is all while the left mouse button is still held down. Or if I press control, each time I press control, it will put that object at a random rotation. So that is a good way to put a whole bunch of random objects and trees all throughout the map. But of course, that is not what we are doing today. We want to put this shed here. And if you were wondering why it's floating, you can click here and if It'll show you that invisible object. So what is this invisible object? It is an interaction trigger. It looks like gameplay. So cow silo. So obviously it is the bunker here. And this is the user attribute window. I highly recommend always keeping that open. This basically tells the game engine what the heck this thing is. And it's got several different indexes on there. I have another video, a few other tutorials if you want to know more about these and editing these and changing these around. So I'm not going to go into detail explaining that other than if you were wondering why this was floating, it's because it sensed that box. And so it thought that that was where you wanted it because that's what control B does. It goes to the next level. And so all I did was I, whoops, I moved this around just a little bit. And here is where if you bring up the window attributes editor, this is actually really helpful for stuff like this because this bunker is at a 90 degree angle. We want this at a 90 degree angle. And here we go. So all we have to do now is lower that down a little bit and the way I did it was I started on this corner and in general, if you're making a map yourself, this is not the best practice because the game actually still has to render all of these objects, even if it is inside something else. So it is a little bit resource intensive, but if you're just doing it, making a few small edits, then it's fine. So anyway, that is what I did. And then if you remember control D, what that does is right there, I duplicated something else. And then I went to, that's 90, so let's do 270, and I put it over here. And then, if you notice that those are off, I scaled it. So a couple different ways you can scale an object is by these axes here. That scales it along the x-axis. This scales it along the y-axis. And then this does the z-axis. And that is a way to get it close and where you want it and then basically to fine tune it i typically go in here and manually edit okay so like if four nine is not right then is five zero right no is five five correct yes and so anyway to get things really close and perfect that's how i edit and make it nicely anyway we're just going to leave this here for now i'm not going to make it perfect so let's just say that that was perfect Actually, on my shed, I think I grabbed a different shed because on mine, I had I had some, whatchamacallit, I had, there, there was some planking, there was some siding on the, on the edge there, so I actually grabbed a different shed. Anyway, that's the basics of how you move things around, so you can move that around and set things up. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could add a lean-to out here in this, in this cow pasture, I could, yeah... I don't know what else I could do. Anyway, I could take the doors off there. Anyway, some of that stuff I probably shouldn't have mentioned because, well, here you go. I just clicked on a few things that <laughs> that, that kind of uh, throw caution. So if you move something, you always want to make sure 
that you're moving everything associated with that object. So for example, here is the collision boundaries for the silage clamp. So if we were to move just this concrete wall, oops, I did not click on it. We're really messing up the map here. I'm not going to save this in case you're curious. So if I wanted to expand or move this silage clamp, you have to understand what you're getting into because there is obviously, right, this little pit, pit trigger here. And then you have the collisions here. The collisions are what prevents material from basically going through the wall and on the other side of the wall. But that's that's kind of getting a little bit more deeper than I want to do it. Basically, that's just a caution where if you move anything with a gameplay attached to it or associated with gameplay, like anytime you move something that moves, well, there's a light. Yeah, I was trying to click on the door. Oh, look, there's another, there's another tip collision. I was trying to, again, click on the stupid door. Thank you. So there is a door trigger. So a lot of times when you duplicate things right here, double doors, you can move this and it'll have that trigger in there. But well, I have a whole nother tutorial on animated objects. It's, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother lesson. But the point is this tutorial is just for simplicity. And if you do anything, if you move anything associated with the gameplay, basically you want to research a little bit further before you do that, because there's a little bit more in depth, but for everything else, if you are adding, for example, a roof onto a gameplay object, well, that's fine. If I am editing debris, so if I want to click on this debris, if I can, okay, so here's a quick trick. If you ever go to click on something and something else is in the way, just go inside that something and now you can click and that barrel will come up so you can see those are in an entire group if you want to play a little bit realistically you can move those somewhere else so you can hit Control b to move that entire transform group somewhere else to kind of simulate it moving around on your map you know the clutter just doesn't disappear in real life you have to move it somewhere so let's say we moved it there and same thing with these barrels so let's go over here to water tank dirty right there next to each other so we can move these water tanks over here if we wanted and again i'm using control b for that and let's just delete this water tank and every time you delete something again same with any time you move it make sure that you are deleting the entire object and there is not another object on there like for example the gutters that i was talking about earlier and again for this if you want to add more detail to the farm maybe you want to say that you're a big huge water tank farm so let's add a few more of these all over the place and this one was inside each other and let's do that there we go so we added a few more water tanks while clearing out this shed for some storage and i think that should just about cover the basics of moving things around deleting them and remember remember those pitfalls that i told you obviously anytime you move anything with cows or basically if it's gameplay related or animated research it a little, a little bit more before you do it there's I'm sure there's a lot more tutorials. I have a tutorial on animated objects and I think a little bit about bales as well, moving the bale triggers around or how to add a bale trigger. Take a careful look at those before you move anything associated with the animals. For example, if I wanted to move this cow farm somewhere else, there is quite a bit to do. You have to move the, if I'm trying to click on, it, I keep getting the window. I'm trying to find the right there. So this is the, yeah, Right here, here's perfect. So cow husbandry, these are all the things associated with making the cows work in game. It takes quite a bit to move and reposition. And you know, if you want to locate this to somewhere else, say a uh, cliff top farm all the way on the corner of the map, that, that takes a lot of work, but you can do it if you want to. It's just a caution. Don't try to move something without understanding what you're moving. Anyway, again, static buildings. If it doesn't move, you're generally safe moving it. Finally, I wanted to cover the snow mask because obviously look at here. You see that green texture? Well, it's not here. In order to get that back, you have to go here. Let's exit out of those. You, I actually have a tutorial. If you want a detailed info on how to add snow mask to a map that doesn't have one, you can check it out on my other video. For now though, this is just 
we want to change the snow mask to make it work with an edit. So this is a very simple change. We basically just have to do these three steps in backwards. So the very first step is change the view distance from 80 to zero for the snow mask. So let's go into, it's never, it's generally never a good practice to, I'm going to save this just because it's a, <laughs> it's a demo map at this point, but yeah, if you make all those changes and you go a little bit crazy, <laughs> like I did, you might just need your backup copy. Anyway, let's exit out of that. Uh, so this is a word of warning. If you go to edit anything on the notepad, this is a text edited version. This is a text version of everything that was in the Giants editor that we just saw visually. So if I make a visual change to the map while this is open, and then I save this, and this was the old version, well then it's gonna basically overwrite those changes I made on the visual editor and vice versa. So it's good practice to never have both open at once. So always keep either this open, the West westcoast.i3d and text editor, or the visual map open in giants editor anyway let's go back to we are looking for snow mask right there so snow mask we need to change view distance to 80 it is set to zero so let's change that to 80 and save and then we can exit out of that i think we are done there and as a final thing we need to undo these other steps in reverse order. So rename invisible invisible mask diffuse zero to invisible mask diffuse. So what we need to find is invisible mask diffuse and rename it to a zero. So let's go in there and those are almost always put in map zero one, but it looks like bullet bill has them in map zero two. So if we go in here, where is invisible mask diffuse right there? We are going to rename this to zero. And then we need to rename invisible mask diffuse one to invisible mask diffuse. This is basically a fancy, well, not a fancy. You're basically switching around the game itself. The engine uses invisible mask diffuse in seasons. So, you're basically changing it out for a visible mask to an invisible mask, but we will. So we are looking for invisible mask to fuse one. There is no one. As you can see, that just means bullet bill deleted it because he was done with it. So if you scroll back up to the top, if your map editor did that, you are looking for invisible mask diffuse. That is the one that you want. And if we open that up, you can see that it has that green texture. And that is the one we want. We will drag and drop it into our map zero one folder. And we don't need to rename it because that was the original name. So again, you want the one with, if you're undoing the map makers change to make this visible, you want the one that's green, invisible mask to fuse. You want the one that is solid black, invisible, right? You want that one, invisible mask to fuse zero. And if this is a private edit, if you're not making this for release, which I guess is the case, otherwise you would already know how to do this. For private edits, if you always play the map with Seasons, you never have to touch any of this again because Seasons knows to make everything invisible. The green snow mask that you are about to see, maps if I did this right, the green snow mask that you are about to see, that is is how I play my map when I record, but obviously you don't see that green snow mask because Seasons mod recognizes, hey, this is a snow mask. We're going to not render this and make this invisible. They do that really nice. Anyway, I am looking for the terrain editing. So we're going to use the terrain editor. Let's exit out of the attributes. We don't need that. What we want, what we are looking for is foliage layer painting. That's the category. And then we're going to go down to SS snow mask and then we're going to want to make sure the zero is check marked and only the zero we're going to want to go up there to terrain foliage paint mode and real quick a few other things that you need to check make sure that the left mouse button says add if you want to change the radius size if you're adding a huge snow mask for a huge building that's where you change the radius you can also change with the scroll mouse button right there and that's how you do it. Just left click to paint. And as long as right mouse button says subtract, 
If you right mouse button, it will take things away. You can also change from a square to a round bush or vice versa to make things a little bit easier to get into the corner. Wherever this green texture, in case you haven't figured it out, wherever this green texture is painted, snow will not fall. So on my shed, you know, it, it was a little bit something like that. I like to make it a little bit kind of like the snow is blown underneath the opening just because that's what snow does to make it a little bit more natural look. Uh, if you want to make every square inch covered that is underneath there, which is probably the right thing to do. Otherwise, people will complain, hey, I put a bale right there on the edge and it rotted. Well, <laughs> yeah. So that's probably why it's a little bit perfectly square straight edge there at the edge of the map. Anyway, I think that should cover all of the basics for editing a map, someone else's map. And remember, this is okay to do if it is a completely private map, but you're not supposed to share this or you know upload it somewhere else. This is your own private thing. This is your own private edit. It is not yours to upload or share somewhere else. So just keep that in mind. And I'm actually thinking myself on my map of since, you know, fertilizer, I was thinking of actually deleting the fertilizer trigger here and deleting all these bags and actually putting real big bags of fertilizer in there and using this as like a fertilizer and seed storage bag or fertilizer and seed storage are. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking on my map. One last word of warning. All of the object changes will show up in map. However, if I make a change, like say I wanted to get rid of, whoops, we are still on snow mask. Say I wanted to get rid of this grass layer here. And this is actually a field texture, right? So we will have to go down here to terrain detail because that's how you're allowed to fertilize because it's actually a field. It's basically a type of a field. The save game file basically takes precedence over what the map says, right? Otherwise, you would never be able to plow up a grass field. It would always remain grass when you load the game again. So the save game file actually saves over this stuff. So you're not going to be able to see this change, you know, this grass, this grass change in the actual map because it'll still show up with grass over this entire area. So that's why things like the ground modification tool exist so that you can change, you know, stuff like this and get rid of the grass texture easily. And one last final thing, there are a few other things that you can edit. If you want to start somewhere else and you, do, if, for example, if you like playing with the no teleport mod, you probably don't want to start there on the hill. So look up here for the career start point and move that to your farm or wherever you are working from. This is my farm. So I put my career start point. Let's see. The blue, I believe, is the direction you are facing. So I put my career start point right there. So that was again with the control B. I let go of control B and then I left click on the map and let's just rotate that around a little bit. So you're kind of facing the mountain view farm. That's what I do. And I don't ever use load places, but load places are the reset point for your vehicle. So if we press F, it will take us to here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And this is the reset point for your vehicles. So pay close attention to the arrows. So the red arrow is up. The blue arrow is pointing that way. And the other load and trigger is going that way. So blue arrow up and red. So the way I like to think of this is it is going from this point here. Arrow red is the direction it's going. So if you want to move this somewhere else, for example, Say you move to Little Wool Hope Farm and this is your home. You have bought this field. You want to be able to reset vehicles to here. Then you're going to want to press Control B and then let go of that and left mouse click there. And this will be your load place, but you don't want it to go that direction. I want it to go this direction. And the end point is going to be right there. And of course, you can change this end point you want yourself anywhere over there. We like can make it higher. We can make it 100 feet high in the air. But then the vehicles will drop <laughs> out of thin air, literally. And that probably would not be the best. Anyway, I hope that it 
you know, that's a little simple video that helps you guys get started. And I hope that everything was clear there. If you have any further questions, please let me know. I tried to be as basic as possible so that new guys could get their hands on modding. It really is fun. Once you start, you know, like, you, it, it really feels like you're, uh, I don't know, some kind of a, a poor man's architect. Obviously, you don't have to worry about support structures, but building a map is a lot of fun. Placing things and moving things around and, you know... It, it just, it just gives you so much more flexibility when you have the ability to change things and edit them. So I really encourage you all to at least give this a try. And I think that you will change things around more to your liking. I don't, I actually don't like that. I was just doing that kind of like a doodle. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed and yeah, be sure, like I already said, be sure to ask questions and I hope I didn't open up a can of worms. One last, one last time to reiterate. Remember when you click on something, remember to always look in the scene graph and grab the entire object because you want to grab everything associated with that object. And then remember, whenever you are moving something that is gameplay related, so I don't want to move this gas tank without the gas station trigger. Well, maybe I do. Maybe I just want to move the gas station trigger. But remember, a lot of this... A lot of things on this map editor are invisible and you need to pay attention to what you're doing. But in general, if you were just moving a random building that's not associated with gameplay or a, you know, a tree or something like that, that doesn't have animated objects on it, you're fine to move it throughout the map. But that's why you always save a backup copy, because if you make all these edits and you do something that <laughs> causes a bunch of errors in the game, well, then you're going to have problems and you're going to wish that you had a backup to restore from, especially if you have, you know, edited a map extensively for your use. So that should just about cover everything. Sorry for rambling on a lot. Anyway, guys, bye bye.